India, whose contributions were well recognized during the British rule and thereafter. This biennial award has been instituted to recognize the outstanding research in agricultural science and to provide incentives for excellence in agricultural research. Now I take the proud privilege of inviting this invitation on the RAS, esteemed chairman of the session, Dr. S. A. Patil sir, former director IRI, co-chairman Dr. R. K. Singh, director IVRI is a Sagar, Dr. A. K. Singh.
This biennial award has been instituted to recognize outstanding research in agricultural sciences and to provide incentives for excellence in agricultural research. So our congratulations to Dr. D.S. Chauhan for getting this prestigious award. So I would like now the chairman to proceed further for the award chair. I beg your pardon. First, I would like to request Dr. A.K. Singh, Director IARI, to introduce the chairperson to the audience.
I will again remind that tomorrow there is going to be a presentation because I won't be get, getting time to speak here from the podium today. And uh, Secretary DBT, uh, she is coming here to give a lecture on very innovative ideas and Professor Punjab she will be chairing. So uh, kindly come tomorrow also in good number, not alone yourself because this number is quite discouraging what it is today in the evening. Tomorrow at least it should be full and, I, and on it definitely it should be uh, more than the full. So with these words I welcome uh, the two chairpersons which we have today and the speaker and all of you in this uh, last award ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. May I now request the esteemed chairman of the session to kindly introduce the eminent speaker of the day to the house. <coughs> Good evening to all. It is a pleasure to organize the with uh, IRA and IRA faculty and uh, involved in their research and academic activities. Today's uh, seventh Rabatru Vishwanath Award, the speaker and the uh, award winning person, this MS Chavan, obtained his MSc and PhD degree from Garabal University, Uttarakhand. He served as the NDRI, as the NDRI colonel in various capacities, including principal scientist, senior scientist. Dr. Chavan is the recipient of many awards and honors, including Rafi Ahmad Kidwai Award, ICR, Vasvik Award in Agriculture Sciences, ICR Team Award in Animal Sciences, Lev Sweater Award by ISSRF, Exemplary Research Award in Dairy Science, Virginia Tech USC, European Union Iran's Mundus Scholarship Award. He has been the President of Indian Society of Sheep and Goat Production and Utilization and organizing secretary of the 12th Agriculture Science Congress. He has published more than 138 research papers, manuals, bulletins. He has been recognized as the Kisan K. Mahanayak by Delhi Tour Darshan. So he made his significant contribution in the areas of animal physiology and biotechnology, produced world's first buffalo clone, the calf, then Garima 2 from embryonic cell produced India's first OPYV of Saiwal Kaup, several other things like that. He has developed many technologies including in vitro embryo production technology in goat, buffalo and yak implemented in all over the country. I am very much impressed by your by data but it has to be translated to the farming community whatever the research has. That's, uh, that has been my passion and we hope Sharma is sitting here many breeds and groups will come. I think we are very eager to hear your lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Dean of this institute, Dr. Agwal, 
In front of me, Dr. J.P. Sharma, the Grand Director Extension, Dr. Rabin Kaur is here, and many more. So this is, uh, I feel honored to receive this, to, to be receiving this award. In fact, uh, as uh, Professor Sir <coughs> told us just, just now that uh, this is the first time, maybe first time this award is being given to the animal scientists. And Dr. Patil, I am honored that uh, because in front of the agriculture scientists, this is the first time I am going to speak my work, which has been done by me uh, with my team, our team, on the assisted reproductive technologies for production of quality farm animals. So I'll be speaking mainly on my journey from in vitro fertilization technology for animal cloning. Probably I will speak my talk in very simple because for the plant sciences probably this will be some of the technical points which may not be visible to them or like uh, so they are not well acquainted with those uh, titles. But anyway, so what I will be focusing myself on introductory part first and then assisted reproductive technologies which has been developed by us on in vitro fertilization, open pickup, stem cell and cloning and finally I will welcome to my talk. Friends, you know that uh, this is uh, just one slide. Everybody knows about this, what is the scenario of life scenario in India. <laughs> And you know that it contributes over 25% in agriculture economic growth and over 4 point, over 4% 4 of the GDP. And this is the data which has been given to us in 2012-13. And as far as the current outcome in terms of milk production is concerned, it is 176 million tons and we call among this top in the world as far as the milk production is concerned. The demand of animal protein, as you know, that it has been predicted more, and what we are, because you see that uh, today these non vegetarian people are growing. So today we can say that around 58 percent uh, the the population of Indian population are non vegetarian. So you can see that earlier, if you see the data before 2000, it was around 60, uh, 50, uh, 48 percent. I'm sorry. So now it is growing and it is expected that by 2050 it is the more uh, this animal protein from the milk and meat will be required for population. But you know the biggest problem what we have is the low productive <coughs> animals uh, in terms of milk, uh, very less amount of milk is being produced and this is inherited because of whatever the our animals, the indigenous animals and the buffalo, what we have is low producer. And the limitations what we us is that we have a, uh, this uh, less population of high yieldless animals in terms of milk production. Today we can say around 15% animals what we have is uh, high milk producing animals and we have we are keeping 85% of animals less producing animals. So therefore the assisted reproductive technology is what we call is arts is to be required here to increase the population of uh, the uh, of, uh, to increase the population of this these the high uh, productive animals and what uh, the scenario like as I said that what can be done this uh, when I joined during 80s after becoming a scientist so the team which was having their at NDRI led by Professor Ahmed Madan and the team was very eminent people were there. So we worked together initially on buffalo. At that time, only artificial insemination program was established in India, and that too at less than 20% the coverage of the AI. But today, uh, the extension, uh, the scientists may know that it is around 25 to 26% of the coverage through the AI. So when uh, this was uh, this, what I'll touch one by one that, uh, and the first and foremost thing was that input transfer technology, which was initiated during that period, was not up to the mark. The limitations were the hormones which were being introduced for uh, 
getting the embryos was not effective because what we were doing, this whatever the technologies which has been developed by the foreign countries, by Eastern, uh, Western countries, we have implemented that here directly. And we have not done the basic and fundamental work in our uh, Buffalo and, and Kettle. So this was the limitation. We were tried our uh, best to establish that in the transfer technology, but we were limiting to the ad or embryos, what we call is embryo for implantation. Then what we thought is, why don't we go to slaughterhouse and take the animals, because what happens that in daily slaughterhouse, maximum animals of the buffalo is being slaughtered from, from the nearby, from Jean, from Isa, from the Merit, and these, the buffaloes are basically Mura buffaloes, very good quality, and we were losing our genes. <coughs> Then we thought to initiate this work on in vitro fertilization technology in Buffalo. So then you see the scenario what we so in 90s we were around producing around 5% transferable embryos. So it means that suppose you give me the 100 oocytes from the uh, ovaries, so I will give you 5 embryos back. That's very, very low. So we have initiated this work and then we, after doing a lot of efforts, because FP experimental, when you are playing with the, uh, the, the biological material from the animals, it's a very, very different than the plant science material, I, I can say here. You can leave, you, you just even a second, if you leave your biological material outside from the animals, it will be spoiled. So there is a limitation that when you are playing with the oocytes of live animals, getting the oocytes from the ovaries and then putting them outside and making them in vitro mature, then subsequently fertilize and then developing them to the implantation stage. So it is around 9 to 10 days job and keeping them alive outside the body. So when we, from there we reach around the, uh, to uh, the the production in terms of the 15% 2000, uh, 2000 and from 2000 onwards to 2015 we were able to produce around 40% blastocysts or that we, what we call this implantation stage in use. So this is the when I joined here so this was the limitation like uh, initially once you have an IVF system so you have to produce them up to 4, uh, four, cell, four to 8 cell stage. The embryology people, they know that the cleavage takes place and then after this cleavage, then you have to keep them alive there at the same time, so you have to develop further. Because in case of the large animals, you cannot uh, use this 4 cell or 8 cell stage for, uh, for implantation. The reason behind is you have to put inside the uterus and the uterine conditional embryo is only implantation stage, that is the blastocyst stage. And that comes on up if you if you culture them for nine days in vitro system. And not only culture, you have to develop them. So there what we saw is the developmental block was there and we spent a lot in terms of like keeping developed our uh, culture conditions uh, very uh, uh, good for the system and then what we have done is we have changed little source of energy, some sort of additives there, the hormones, growth hormone and many additives there and then subsequently we this to the blast system, we overcome this block. And then again from this, if you see that we were able to, have, we, it took us around eight years to develop to the blast system. Every time we fail, fail, fail. And from then onwards, again this is another step that you have to develop to the blast system from Marola. And again it took us a lot of time. Although this, uh, the initially we were getting around 5% or 6%, it was not up to the mark. We thought that we should get at, at least 50% blastocysts. And there we have used all these, all these, all these things as Madam says in the in previous talk, the antioxidants, and it plays a very important role for the development of the uh, embryos to the blastocyst stage. And then uh, this, uh, this is uh, at the same time we, what we were our thinking was that we have to simplify the protocol. The, the laboratory, the facilities, what we have at NDRI may not be available in other, uh, other institute, institute of animal science. Because it requires huge 
infrastructure inside, you need to put septic conditions, a lot of things is required here. So what we were uh, thinking of to simplify the technology, the technology which has been developed in Western countries may not be useful for us because we cannot afford that much of expensive uh, chemicals. So what we took is, this is one experiment, what we took is, like, uh, what we have done is, in, in order to have a size, when you see that, uh, this is a little technical word, uh, the oocyte uh, is covered, oocyte is the immature stage of the egg. And you have to, if you want to have in virtual fertilized them, you have to have a mature stage first. So you have to incubate 24 hours in CO2 incubator at 5% CO2. So what you have to do is, what we have done is, this is the, the, the cumulus cells was covered with the oocytes. And once you uh, culture them, and then you have to develop to the blossom stage. And you see that after 174 oocytes, which was taken in this experimentation, only hardly this only one percent developed to the molar stage, and one percent developed to the blossom stage. Very very low. Because either you can increase this if you put lot of additives inside, this is very expensive too. So what we did is instead of doing that just took the environment from the in vivo system. So what we have taken the oviductal cells from the buffalo, we just flush out from the uterine horn and from that we took the sum of the cells and we put those cells in our culture conditions system. And there you can see the drastic change in terms of the morula and plasticity production. So this is the, this is the idea because when, and not only that, we took some of the embryos for implantation and we got up early at this stage of the pregnancy. You can see that when the pregnancy was established and then subsequently the calf was produced. But again, once if you talk about this, the blastocyst production, so these are the blastocysts. So only blastocysts is not like the blastocysts when you see under the culture system, you will find that it has got a blastocyst cavity. Sometimes misinterpretation is there that you consider the embryo which have a, this some sort of cavity is the blastocysts. So it's not enough. So what we thought is to culture them further with this some sort of additives, we change our additive system and so many things and we uh, bring them to the hatch stage. You can see that this is the hatch stage. This is zona pellucida, which covers the blastocyst, and these are the blastocysts. And from there, we, you can see this under the in vitro culture system. So these are the healthier blastocysts, you can see, and these are the less healthier blastocysts. And because there is also that, because once you have a blastocyst, they should have more than 64 cell stages. Below them, you cannot consider they are suitable for implantation. So at this moment, once we have taken the good, uh, the blastocysts, we produce the calf here in the list, the IVF calf. Mm -hmm. So number of IVF calf has been produced by uh, with, uh, through the established uh, the protocol what we have developed, and then on this basis what we can see is that the blastocysts, which if you are producing this type of blastocysts, can lead to the offspring and this is there in front of you. So the, another limitation in our uh, animal science is that uh, in, in cattle we cannot have a, uh, the slaughter ovaries because of the, the pain in slaughter because of the religious reasons you know that. And the other other idea is only that, that either uh, can you use this those elite animals, high producing animals through the ovum pickup. As it said, the ovum pickup is a very simple term. Where you can through the ultrasound uh, uh, ultrasound visualization with a small needle and you can put inside this, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, through this, uh, 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 the anus you can put inside and you can just pick up the follicles without damaging the animal very fine medium. And this is what we call is ovum pickup. And once you have ovum pickup, you have to get the oocyte, number of oocytes. It's a very simple uh, technique. And what we did in this regard that this was a cow which was able to, uh, available to us uh, after eighth lactation and she was unable to conceive further. So we took this oocytes from this, we standardized our 
technique here, we, although we took other animals too, but this was a very important cow because she was producing around, around 4 liters milk a day. She was a Saiwal indigenous cow. And from that, we took the oocytes, then mature, then fertilized, and developed to the blossom stage at 9 days uh, stage, or on 9 days uh, culture, and we produced the holy. This is the first uh, ever calf which was produced in case of the Saiwal through open pickup. So this was also extended in the Yak, and uh, Nasi Yak, uh, we have initiated this work there also. And now this is this is becoming a routine procedure now by NDI. So this is the one experimentation what we can see that you see that uh, this uh, number of follicles from where the two sides is uh, available. And once you have the follicles, from those follicles you have to isolate this, the two sides which was recovered like this and then you can keep the considerable quality oocyte because sometimes you also you may also get the dead quality oocytes there. And once you have a culture, then you can go for implantation. And this was the after this 18 embryo transfer, this only single opium calf was produced. So very very tough task. But uh, uh, this is the, the, these are the techniques which was required for the elite animals where you have elite animals you can multiply them fastly this way. And those animals which are not uh, responding for the normal uh, AI program, for normal ETT program, so these animals can be multiplied through this way. So similarly, these are the, some of the areas like uh, where we can have assisted reproductive uh, uh, technologies and when we initiated this work, stem cell work, during 2007, so the, the ability of the stem cell line was there in those species like mice, human and cattle, but no stem cell line was available in case of buffalo. And we initiated this work and then we took the reference, uh, the mouse model system, where you can see this, this is the blouses system or the mouse and then this is, this is the mass. Blossus is this we call it zona pellucida, then trophectodermal cells and then in the cell mass cells. And from this mass cells you have to isolate and you have to take the embryonic stem cells. And what you are doing is with the live, uh, live uh, blossus you are playing with this and getting the, this is the size of this blossus is around 400 microns. So macron type of structure you have to take out the inner cell mass cells and from there you have to consult further to get your embryonic stem cells on bench. So what we did, you can see this, it was again tedious for us to get these inner cell mass cells from the buffalo. The reason behind is in case of buffalo, because of the large quantity of lipids, you cannot visualize the cells <coughs> properly. So this was the initiation approach over when we have a, you have a blastocyst from uh, blastocyst, uh, you have to isolate the inner cell mass cells and from there you can uh, consider those cells as putative cells and then from there you have to see this, the, their, their status, whether they have a self-renewal activity because the stem cells have been considered the, it has got a self-renewal uh, renewal activity. And at the same time, they uh, they maintain this their their stemness. And once you have this, then you can uh, call that after over a, several passages. So it means that it was around 300, 400 days of in vitro culture, keeping cells alive, maintaining all the culture system, the septic, and all these things. And then you can say that you have a stem cell line with you. At the same time, you have to check that whether they are able to differentiate. Because the stem cells have been considered the undifferentiated cells and can produce over 200 type of cells. And I tell you, so the last when 1978, 79 election was there at USA, so that was fought on the stem cells. And you see that stem cells are so important as far as the human is concerned because. Stem cells therapy will be there in 2030. It is expected that all the therapy will be done with stem cells. 
So this is the what uh, the diagrammatic representation here. Yes, so what you have a culture system. In that culture system, you have to grow your first embryo through in vitro fertilization technology. Once you have the embryo, you have to isolate the inner cell mass cells. From that inner cell mass cells, you have to culture for further them. You have to go for passages by one by one. <coughs> and then once you have passages and several passages, you can see that either these cells are maintaining their standards. Because initial cell number is very, very low, around 30 to 40 cells. But you have to develop the millions of cells in vitro. And once you have the millions of cells in vitro, you have to check their stemness. You have to take care of all these the, the, the factors there, also the supplement, some of the factors. LIF, SGF, BMP4, TGF, beta, these factors which are responsible for maintaining the stem cells. And after once you have a stem cells, you have to see this, their pluripotency, also see their differentiation, because they are prone to differentiation and you have to avoid them to differentiate. Because you have to maintain their stem cells. Once you have a stem cell line, so you can feed it and wherever is required, in lipid nitrogen, wherever is required, you can thaw, you can use those cells. So these are some of these, uh, these work which have been subsequently checked by the uh, surface markers and molecular markers and what we obtained is the four cell lines which were developed and these cells are lines are lying with us at NDRA canal. So also you can have an in vitro system like you just put this reuteric acid and you can have a director differentiation, neural type of cells. You can also have up with this uh, the muscle type of cells. So these are the work which have been uh, done there. Also there are the limitation because when once you are talking about the molecular biology of stress, so you need to have a biological material. And there you can, once you have a stem cells, you can also degenerate them to germ cell type of cells or germ cells. And this was initiated by us recently and we were able to develop these stem cells into the germ cells, the oocytes and embryo. So many basic and fundamental research, suppose you want to do that, you have a biological material with you, so you can go all these, all the parameters, you can, you can do that in vitro. So what we have done is further by uh, this using these uh, embryonic stem cells uh, with the nuclear transfer, what we call is animal cloning, and we produce the calf, uh, the calf Garima, and she became an adult now, and she has produced many calves now. This the idea is here that once you have a, the uh, embryonic stem cells with you, you can manipulate those cells, and you can have a desired animal. Suppose you want to incorporate some of the gene inside or you want to have a gene it is, uh, editing there through the CRISPR-9 technology. So you can do that and you can ultimately use through the nuclear transfer and produce the normal animals or desired animals or the animals what we call is transgenic animals. We do not speak much about the transgenic because we in, in animals this is the, this is the uh, this great pressure on us from the DVD that not to speak transgenic word in animals because uh, we, we, we have to get this approval uh, from the DVD which is which may not be allowed to us. <laughs> Here, uh, then the other approach what we were talking is this was the embryonic stem cells where the embryos were generated then subsequently uh, the stem cell lines was produced. The other talk what we are talking is the spermatogonial stem cells. So this is the other, uh, another option where we can have the assisted reproductive technologies and we are, where we can have a desire or, or, or quality animals. You can see that this is the structure that basically those who are biology students in, uh, they, are, they must know that seminiferous tubules where you can have a spermatogenesis takes place inside the testes. And there, you can find the uh, different type of cells through these basal cells and some of the cells which we call is here demarcated as a red in color is spermatogonial stem cells. As I said, the stem cells are the cells they can maintain their stemness at the same time so you can uh, differentiate them to produce many type of cells. So here it takes part of stem cells and all this spermatogenesis takes place because of these cells. If you remove these cells, though then the spermatogenesis will be stopped and the semen production will be stopped in case of male. 
So what we did is we have taken these shells, and these are the few, the limitation with these shells is very low in population, 0.03 percent. And you have to take out these shells from these spermatogonial seminiferous tubules and then culture them further and enrich them further. And once you have these shells, so then you can manipulate, you can do miracles, yes, I can say that. You can, you can put whatever gene you want to put inside because once you have that gene inside, you can use for this multiplication of these, these, these shells and finally you can get very uh, specialized, specific type of sperm. <coughs> so once you have these cells, you have to go for culturing them again the same way, same fashion, over the 200, 300 days of in vitro culture, maintaining the aseptic conditions at the same time, maintain, uh, maintaining the, all the environments there like, so that they should not be differentiated to the spermatogonia, spermatocyte or spermatids. You have to maintain the sameness there. And then you have to check with the markers there whether they are the stem cells or not with some sort of molecular markers. And once you have uh, these molecular markers here like the DBA plus F and Thai 1, these are the gene which has been considered as the markers for these spermatogonial stem cells. And then once you have that, so you can use the, those stem cells for the transfection. Green frozen protein is one of these. Uh, this <coughs> DNA tag with the GAP and then incorporate with this uh, and you can have uh, some sort of method which has been already established in some of the method. What we saw that in our case, the nucleofaction method is very, very important and it leaves around 70% outcome here. And these cells, then you can say that you have a stem cells with the tag of the uh, this and then you can go for the implantation. So this is the one way, like once you have a, a, a testis with you, you can remove this outer part, then take out this, uh, the shelf population, isolate the spermatogonial stem cells, enrich them further in vitro culture system, and then some of the shelves you can go for the cryo in uh, liquid nitrogen, and some of the shelves you can use for the transfection uh, and then subsequent implantation to the testes of the animal. And once it has incorporated inside, they will start the, the uh, taking the participation or participate there through spermatogenesis, they will start producing the sperm. And these sperms will be the very definite, uh, very desirable type of sperm which can be subsequently uh, uh, used for this uh, uh, desirable uh, type of male, uh, the production. So this is what we did is at NDRS, uh, we use this uh, uh, tag with the uh, GAP protein with the human protein C that was the uh, initiation like the transgenic animal production. But this was the experimental part there. So what we have done is we tag with the GAP with human protein C and subsequently put inside this ready testes and then these uh, with the GAP tag you can see that they were participating there then some sort of spermatogenesis takes place there. But unfortunately, we could not get even a single cell having a GAP type there. So it means that these cells was not capable to develop up to the sperm stage. But they were developed there inside the testes. So this was the just initiation there in work. We have limited our work because just uh, in, uh, not to go for this uh, because we were not having a licensing of the transgenic animal production. So we went a little further where we have initiated work on the animal cloning and I say that this is the calf which you see here is it was produced from the animal which was died 10 years before and from that animals not from a sperm but from the somatic cell of that animal. And this is what the, like, the procedure is that we have a ovaries from slaughterhouse or from ovum picker. Once we have ovaries, you have to go for in vitro maturation of ovaries. Oocytes from the ovaries, you have to culture it in the head. And then so that you, the beauty of this uh, in vitro maturation is suppose the oocyte is mature, the first polar body appears in one side. 
And from there, you just uh, cut this with this small blade needle. And from there, then once you have this, so you have a inoculated who has with you without having a zona parasita, but only who plasma there. And this is as good as suppose you have a boil egg with you. You remove the yellow part and two boil egg, you put this whatever the donor shelf is there in between and just much together with this uh, the fusion with this uh, the fusion machine and then activate this uh, this the subsequently. What we did is from here we took the ear shelf from here and the subsequently cultured these shelves for around uh, 70 passages and took one shelf and use that one shot with the help of the evolutionary to attach with this uh, the oplast without having a nucleus inside because we have removed the nucleus from that donor cell uh, from that oocyte and then once you have that you just must with the two oocytes and uh, the, together and must together and then activate this act uh, to behave like an embryo so it is it, it, it's a very tedious job here it's very, uh, and then once you have that then develop to the blastocyst system. So here you can see that in case of Donny, which was produced in 1979 from Wilmet Lab at Edinburgh, UK, you can see that what they have done is they have used a similar method, but the, this what they have used a macro manipulator system, a very expensive around 45 lakhs rupees uh, in terms of the cost and also requires a high skill and power there, and that may not be feasible to us under the Indian conditions. So what we have the, what they have done is using this and by uh, all this m taking out this nucleus, then putting the donor cell inside, then culturing them further, developing them to the modular stage, and from modular stage the dolly was produced. But in our case, you can see that without just using this micro manipulator system, we use a small blade, and therefore we call it handmade cloning. It took us around 16 years to develop this stage. It's not that every time we were working, many publications came, all the publications, <laughs> but we were not satisfied till we get this car on the ground. So this was this, uh, this and after that, so we, we had done this implantation and the clone animal was produced and this is what in front of you, this Garima car was produced uh, that, that way. So this is the, some sort of uh, significance here, and here yeah, this uh, this uh, the, uh, this uh, question appeared in uh, Paul Balega Kaurapati KBC. It was a 50 lakhs rupees question. Thank you for selecting me for this award. At this I will get my But this uh, I, I tell you this this can be possible because it's not uh, me. It was we we have done this work. The teamwork which we have there, and it was uh, Professor uh, Singla and me and Palta and our students, we worked together day and night. Mm -hmm. Then uh, this was the satisfaction. Many papers you, during that uh, time you saw this in ICR website as well as the Times of India in the Sun Times, the newspapers. But we got a satisfaction when it appeared in the New York City news that my uh, professor was there, he sent me this new on the very same day and complete me that Indian scientists clone world was buffalo calf. So this was the satisfaction to us. Thank you. So, but there you see that this looks very simple like put here one cell and then make it a embryo and then implant it a calf will be produced. But I tell you it's a very tough task. Around 36 PhD students completed their work on the assisted reproductive technologies in our I produced 12 PhD students on these areas, stem cell area, IBF area, and then open pickup area and then this the cloning area. Because it requires the factors very, very, because it, it, the, stems, the, the, the cloning is uh, very tedious where a lot of factors is responsible for that. The maturation time of the egg, the oocyte, the cytoplasmic volume, and all these things. I have simplified it there. I'm not putting all these terms there, which is uh, mainly we talk in, when 
Dr. Lehmann's about assessing us, so we have to talk all these uh, parameters there, how we did our experimentation. But here you can see that all these factors, electric pulse, when you are merging together, you should not have a much electric pulse, otherwise they will merge there. That will be just like a boom outside, so everything will be away. And then also the media, culture, system, aseptic condition, you have to keep your mouth away. Otherwise you will have the, over, this, this, uh, the human uh, oogloth inside and so many things inside. So you have to, human bacteria also, you have to avoid all these things while handling the embryo outside and while putting inside the incubator, taking out the media, putting again the media. So those, all the factors were responsible for this. I will not elaborate those factors here. But surely, so it requires a lot of efforts. And then again, the limitation, the biggest limitation with this is the stillborn, stillbirth, abortion. Many times when you can see this as uh, the one, uh, the fear of the, the clone animals. And in biological system, you have uh, the system which you have outside in vitro. You can handle this, you can reduce, you can increase, decrease, add or remove or so many things, you can do that. But under this, once you implant it, go inside and then wait for uh, another nine months for the, uh, this uh, carbon gestation takes, in case of a flow, nine months. For nine months, what is going to have inside this uh, this uh, the uh, this faint body or the uterus? You know, you you never know. So this is the biggest limitation as far as the cloning is concerned. And we have uh, many. I should not elaborate here, but the success rate is very very low, around four percent. So if you implant hundred embryos, so you can have only calf, four calves with you. And there many times we used to have an abortion take place like this. This is the one example. You see that this is the one clone which was uh, together and then subsequently just before uh, like 15 days ahead of the parturition, they died this way. So this is the serious, just the serious concern. Of course the things will change and you can see that uh, here this one experimentation, what we saw this, once you have embryos here, and then from these embryos, we could able to develop this, uh, the blastocysts and implant this. But you can see that the, this was a typical experimentation what we have done. In the same embryo, we check all these parameters of this embryo and see that whether if it is going to give the calf, the how this embryo was behaving there. What we could see is the ratio between the inner cell mass cells and the photodermal cells. I tell you for the biological strength that uh, the inner cell mass is responsible for making all the endodermal body, heart, liver, kidney, all these things. And the ectodermal cells is, uh, is, uh, is responsible for the making the umbilical cord and from the ecto, uh, external part of the body. And you can see that what because of this what we are facing this large calf syndrome. And this is the biggest problem. This calf was around 56 kg weight. Normally, the calf of the buffalo born is around 20, uh, around 32 to 35 kg body weight. So around 40% large body weight. So you have to handle that. Sometimes you may get the dystopia. <laughs> this normal parturition will not uh, be there. So you have to go for the caesarean, uh, caesarean uh, this the parturition. And this is what we struggle a lot, but we have reduced this large calf syndrome now because what we are doing is we are the additives which were we adding and was enhancing the growth there. We have reduced those those factors like EGF, epidermal growth factors, and we have reduced. And at the same time, we were fixing ourselves that we have to limit the cell number. You can see the cell number should not be beyond beyond 128 cells. What we have observed is this large calf syndrome is appearing on those blastocysts where the number of cells are more than 128 cells. Mm -hmm. So this what I was talking is this, uh, the, the, uh, even then what today we can say that this is the, this is, this is the technology which can do miracle to us, which, which can uh, increase the elite animals there and if you just fix focus that to producing the quality males. Here the one example is there that we had a semen from the progeny chested bull which was died 10 years before. 
we have taken the semen and along with the semen, as you know that along with the semen, with the thrust, the epithelial cells also appear with the semen, comes with the semen. And once you go for the freezing of this semen, these cells will be will also be frozen there. Then after post thawing of this uh, post uh, after thawing of this, uh, you can see the post thaw cells there. So you will find that the sperm cells and somatic cells. So what we did is we removed the som uh, the sperm cells and we took only somatic cells and start causing them further in vitro. It was also very tough because the, these cells are not that much of viable. So you have to take one or two cells and then multiply them further. And once you have a multiplied quality cells there, so then you can take those cells as a donor cells to make a, uh, the, the clone animals. And this was what we have done. This is what we call is hope for the restoration of death valuable bull. So uh, animal cloning, and you can see that uh, through this way we were able to produce this calf named as Raja, and this calf is still there at NDRI Kanna. Not only that, I suppose you have a very good system, and then this was the again challenge to us. Uh, we had given a sample from the this um, Asa, the wild buffalo, uh, which is uh, different than bubbles, bubbles. Then the bubbly bubbles, it is known as the bubbly's uh, knee. And then because uh, this was in, the, uh, in Chhattisgarh, they have, a, they have only single animal under their the captivity. And then they told us that, okay, take one crore rupees from us and produce one clone calf. And they have given us 85 lakhs rupees. And we struggled again three, four years and we were able to produce the pasa through this uh, technique. Thank you. So many calves, you can see that around 14 calves, live survival calves were there. They had a progeny also, progeny and very normal, very good in, in terms of the whole physiological parameters. If you check that, and these calves was uh, different calves which was produced at NDRI as a tag with the different. Some of the calves we have produced from the urine cells, from milk cells. Because uh, sometimes if you have a urine, you just take the urine, you will also get the, some of the somatic cells there, culture those cells and produce, and have a donor cells and produce the animals like this. So this is the, uh, what uh, we have done so far. Uh, and uh, the, still the work is going on there. So we have right now the clone animals there, we have right now four embryonic stem cell lines there. If anybody is willing to work on these embryonic stem cell lines, they can get from the NDRF, they can have a one and two, the concept further and start working on those cells. But with this, what we can conclude today, I can say that uh, we have, uh, although we have uh, some initial work which have been carried out by me, by us during last 25 years, and that was, uh, have a great potential in terms of the enhancing the productivity of the animals, quality animals. Today, we can say that this is limited to lab and nuclear farm only. But tomorrow, as uh, Professor Patil said, that you have to go to the farmers to work. Definitely, we are looking for that. And more research is required to take it to the farmers to work. So this was the work which has been done. I said that uh, 25 years, 26 years it took. And after going those things, and then I became a director at CIRG Mokdom, but things are still working there. We have a program on the cloning. And my students are there, they are working continuously in this area. So these are the people we were, uh, the, the team workers, uh, Dr. S.P. Singla, Dr. Panta, and Dr. Mani. Four people were working continuously. We were all the principal scientists, but never fought together. So because uh, I was a junior most among them. And we never fought. We have been supported many programs by the DBT initially, and DBT was like uh, the given us around 11 programs, our funding program. We have been supported by the NEIP and NASF and ICR, and then of course these are the people, young people who are who, who put all these things. And the unfortunate part is there that all the my young students they went away. They are somebody in NIS working on the stem cell people are working on cancer cells and someone is working in uh, the virgin attack and no one is here. Like One scientist is only working at, uh, he became a principal scientist now in uh, NIMP Bangalore. 
but less of the people they have been settled. So this is what we have at this uh, again. This uh, the, the we have to think in this direction that how to um, uh, to to retain these people. Uh, this uh, this is some sort of area here, sir, yes. where your people are going away from you. And thank you very much. And thank you once again for coming to this award. And thank you to the honourable director of this institute, Professor E. K. Singh, for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of the plant science people that I was uh, afraid that I ought to speak in front of you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for an excellent presentation. I now request the chairman of the session to kindly present the remarks. Co-chairman Dr. H. Rehman, Rashmi Agrawal Dean and all the faculty members of the IRI different schools, divisions. It is, it is a very fascinating research that uh, Chavan has done, spending almost two and a half decades with uh, his trusted colleagues. I really congratulate and you really richly deserve for this uh, award. So, how to take this, my, always my objective, whether it is at IRA or Garva, how to take, make it practical like human beings. Human beings, it has been made very practical. If you go back to the history, Hitler wanted uh, his own type of people to fight the world wars. Lotus culture, he imagined then only that he wanted his own personality to be multiplied in test tubes and uh, sent to army. So when thinking can go like that, so I had an occasion to visit uh, Israel. This is very common there, the embryo technology is so common. Seven quadruplets, seven, eight pentaplets like that in uh, goat. And uh, goats give seven liters of milk and wound to this liter they die. So the revolutionary thing that uh, how that country whether that policy can be brought through your research in India. A group of people can sit together, I think whether it is IRI, NDRI or whatever it is, unless you bring the science to the civilization and really do. And as regards your work is the concerned exemplary, but how to take it probably needs to be thought over. And uh, animal science, as you rightly said, that uh, we are working in a farming system approach in some project uh, at Karnataka now. Your uh, animal system is the number one to contribute to the income with, with much stability. And that to goats and sheep like ATMs. So the embryo culture, whatever the complicated technology, blast the cell to side to this to that, probably needs to be brought to the practical uh, aspect. I think very good presentation. And I think the right person has been chosen. I really congratulate the jury who have done this work. Uh, so please continue this work. Whatever team spirit you want, you can make a special project to DBT. I think uh, tomorrow DBT secretary is coming. We can discuss it here. Uh, thank you very much. I think I, I also thank the uh, agency and Rashmi on the last minute that uh, uh, Today, Salimat Sun's marriage is there and we missed and we came here. That, that could not be adjusted. So, thank you very much. Thanks to all the faculty. Thank you, sir, for your kind remarks. May I now request Dr. H. Rahman ji to kindly present his remarks. <coughs> Very good afternoon to all of you. I respect the chairman of this session. My earlier colleague, Dr. E. K. Singh, director and DDG extension. Dr. 
Reshmi Agarwal Dean and my most beloved earlier, he was my scientist and he was director of Dr. Amy Chauhan, has been selected for this award. And uh, <coughs> sitting in the audience, many very senior people are there, Dr. Gaur and other, I may not uh, be familiar with the name, but all of that my colleagues here. The assisted reproduction, as you name, itself is assisted, how to reproduce through assist, assistance. Initial, Dr. Dr. Chauhan has made it very simple, different assisted reproduction that we are using in particular in the livestock system. <coughs> he has uh, described a very simple way, this is the first one he described, he has not described, but first initial stage, it was the artificial insemination. How we have to collect the semen from the animals and we put the semen in the animals. The heat, those animals are coming on the heat and produce their calves. That was the initial. But after the <coughs> technologies developed slowly, slowly, and we have shifted to from one to another these complex systems of reproduction. He has mentioned about that how in his 25 years of career, how these systems developed in India, right? These systems were not earlier. We are just satisfied with the AI and some other technology. But we have come up with that IVF in vitro fertilization. If you, but if you say, or you can go through the city, you will find hundreds of medical organization, IVF, IVF, everywhere, every look at Karnat and that. And probably because of that IVF become so popular, this uh, twinning among the human beings, particularly I have seen very recently, almost all the, those are using IVF, they are getting twins. For example, if you come to my office, I have three lady scientists and they are all three have this twinning, maybe because of that uh, artificial intervention. He has uh, mentioned about another system, about this uh, ovum pickup method. This is particularly we are using as he's mentioned for the cows. Because cow slaughter is banned and we should appreciate that we are not collecting the ovum from the slaughter houses. That can be done for the other animals like the buffalo, sheep, goat and other, but not for cows. And that uh, we are collecting that and after that, after manipulation, we are putting the, uh, the pregnant animal, making the animal grab it so that they can accept the oocyte in that over. And uh, the, they have uh, made some several steams and they have done the experimentation to simplification of the IVF technology. And uh, that uh, I must congratulate India Rice under the leadership of Dr. M. Sohan. He has got so many grants from for uh, this uh, technology development in different areas. He was also associated with young reproduction for this. Stem cell is a very, very another very recent area where our young people should work. This is the one we are telling this technology. Technologies are not very easy. It is it required infrastructure, it required skill, it required, it required some devotion in the research work. Stem cell is becoming very, very important and if you see that many cases, particularly in medical cases, this is very, very important why the, there is a whole body is found with uh, fire or anything, accident, some muscles, it detached from the bone. That case is, is stem cell is becoming very, very, there is a become, become the therapeutic use of the stem cells. And cloning, he has mentioned that uh, Gavima was first cloned animal in our country. Or before that, uh, the first, uh, he has also already mentioned about the Dolly. Dolly was in 
when we are when we're young, we're young and we are uh, amazing the how from the somatic cell how the dolly was produced. And uh, these are very common technologies we are using nowadays, NDRI and the Buffalo Research Institute at Lisa, they are continuously working and recently the Buffalo institution they are also using this technology for their this. And the first uh, Buffalo Cup they are developed from the cloning section. They have taken the cell from the tail, not from any other cell, because uh, this is a somatic cell only, and they have deployed, deployed chromosome that can be taken from animal, and they are very successful taking the uh, cell from the tail. And that, uh, of course, at uh, that time I was just joined as a DDG animal science. And we named that buffalo, on naming ceremony I was there, and that uh, buffalo was given the Hisar Goro. After that, uh, they have also done very good work because some buffalo, that is only available in northeast part of the country, and uh, they have developed the buffalo also. Yeah. That uh, he has also mentioned about the about this limitation that we are having in the country. But uh, I have to say here a few words about the cloning. In European country, European Union has banned the cloning in life, the domestic livestock. That means cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, pigs, etc. That should be used for the, as he has also mentioned, Dr. Chauhan has also mentioned, it should be done for the elite. Animals for the either mother is available or is available. And uh, when I was DDG, we have initiated a project that was given to Buffalo. Why you cannot produce hundreds of uh, Jubraj? Jubraj, you know, all we are showing, particularly the IRI Krishimela. Krishimela. And why you cannot produce? Now they have started and they have already produced three or four. And in that way, that will continue. You know that the Jubara is costing about 9 crore rupees. Even then, he is not selling that anymore because it's now he said mostly selling the semen. And as compared to the semen of ordinary buffalo or this elite buffalo, other elite buffalo, that is costing about 100 rupees. And he's selling that uh, Jubara is about 400 rupees. That is his permanent income. In that way, because I will uh, invite the young scientists particularly. This technology, this, uh, when we speak, uh, it is very simple technology, but when you go to the laboratory for the implementation of the laboratory, our chairman has also mentioned the how to this technology to the field conditions and uh, how to sustain this technology in under field conditions. Many, because uh, as you know that uh, you are also trying for the sexing of semen. Because uh, the India, we cannot take the burden of unproductive animals. We are taking the semen only produce the particularly for cattle for the, the for female cows. Sexing of semen technology is uh, only available with the U.S. technology, but they are not handy. But uh, many companies are coming to India and they are also producing. And uh, many of state government, UP, Bihar, and some other states, they have mixed up a lot of understanding with those companies. And they are coming and they are bringing that machine for shorting the semen. But uh, it, it takes some time because their buffalo semen, semen is totally different, or cattle semen is totally different. But in our case, we have to calibrate, calibrate <laughs> or uh, rationalize uh, the machine with our Sahiwal, eat cement together. It will take some time, but definitely it is coming. In the meantime, uh, you know that uh, Bharati Agriculture Foundation, that uh, uh, Pune-based company, they are bringing some gear sorting cement from Brazil, and they are distributing some of the places here. And uh, we have also given some responsibility to India, right, Doctor? Initially, he was also part of that project, but. Somehow he has left now, Dr. Mahanti and others, they are working. How to reduce the number of sperm cell in EI? Because uh, getting a elite bull, it is very, very difficult. We are using about 20 million 
number of sperm that is uh, sperm cell in one ml of uh, cement that we are using for artificial insemination, how to reduce this number, how if we can reduce the number of the sperm cell in part, we are working on that and they have been successful to about 5, 000, 5, million, 5 million sperm cells now and that is also perfected technology. In that way, there is a lot of research is going on animal sciences and hopefully, and uh, as you know that uh, I am now not in the ICR, I have joined in the international organization, ILRI. We are also working some of the places where India having a capacity, but uh, where we can work together. This year we have taken a project on the, the backyard poultry genomics. We have huge number of backyard poultry, but how to improve that technology with the support of the international organization. And uh, another project <coughs> we have taken this year, particularly with the suggestion from the DGICR, the animal disease economics. We, are, we never, we always thinking for the, the how much losses from the uh, human diseases, but we are not uh, taking account of the animal science division. Dr. A.K. Singh has mentioned, we developed an institution at Bangalore, Nibeti, National Institute for Veterinary Epidemiology and Disease Property. We have calculated only for two diseases. One is uh, food and mouth disease, another is brucellosis and economy. We are losing about 23,000 crores. Our honorable agriculture minister is speaking <laughs> everywhere. That was our finding when I was director there. And for brucellosis also, we are losing about 23,000 crore rupees per year. That is a direct cost. We are not calculating the indirect weight losses and others. In that way, we have taken another project. And uh, the burning problem, that is the mother of all challenges that uh, Agriculture is facing, we have taken that project also, mitigation of methane emission by livestock in the country. Because Ilri has very good technologies, very good scientists, national, international scientists, we are coming together and working together to mitigate this. Because every time agriculture and others, we are blamed for that livestock is the main. But uh, livestock in India, we are producing about 10 million tons only. This methane, it is not very high as compared to agriculture sector also. With this, uh, this I thank uh, Dr. A.K. Singh and Dr. Sumi Madam for inviting me at the last moment to co chair uh, along with the, our dignitaries and the uh, honorable Dr. Party. And I also congratulate Dr. Chohan. As I mentioned, he was my closest and favorite scientist, and he is still he was with us and working that. And I thank all of you for sharing my some of uh, views on the livestock sector in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. May I now request Director and Vice Chancellor IRI to kindly do the honor of participating in <coughs> the chairs of the session, Dr. S. A. Patil and Dr. H. Rehman, with a shawl and memento as a token of affection and acknowledgement.
I request Madam Rashmi, Dean in Joint Director Education, to present formal vote of thanks. चलिए करता हूँ मैं करता हूँ मैं हाँ कर दिया मैंने कर दिया मोस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर एसी पार्टी फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर आईआरए डॉक्टर एच रायमान रीजनल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फॉर साउथ एशिया आईएलआरआई न्यू दिल्ली डॉक्टर एमएस चौहान विनर ऑफ़ द सेवन राव बहादुर बी विश्वनाथ अवार्ड डॉक्टर � First of all, my congratulations to Dr. Ahmed Johan for outstanding achievements and very good presentation. And we are very delighted that you are recognized for this prestigious award. The chairperson of this function, Dr. S.A. Party, is very respected senior agricultural scientist and an able administrator. So we are very grateful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation, coming here to chair this very important session on Seventh Rao Bahadur Vishnu Award. We are very grateful to Dr. H. Rehman, and uh, he also uh, was the chairperson for this session for accepting our invitation at the last minute, as he mentioned also. So, our apologies and due respect, sir. We are honored that you are here and you spared your valuable time and attended, attended this award lecture. I am highly grateful to Director IRI, Dr. A.K. Singh, for his always constant guiding throughout the convocation program and attending the program throughout the day. I am again really thankful to all the guests who are there in the hall and thanks to all the directors, heads, HODs, all the staff, students, although they are at this time of the session. So just thank you to all of you and once again thank you for attending these our lectures throughout the day. Some of them have attended throughout the day, so I'm so thankful to them. Madam Kaur, Annapurna, Dr. J.P. Sharma, Dr. A.K. Singh, all were there to encourage. Thank you so much. Thank you all. We now join for a uh, tea and cheese and Hello, bhai. 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 Hello,